Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here for a Queen Sugar Season 5, Episode 5 review. And um, it was a good episode. It was a warm episode. I don't think that this review is going to be as long as it um, traditionally is because, one, <laughs> I took my mucinex this morning and I felt great. And then I felt so good. I didn't take that second you know, dosage of it. And so now I'm trying to roll back, roll it back. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then, uh, I started crying during the queen sugar episode, you know, and they're blowing your nose and the pressure is just right. But be forewarned tissues on deck like I'm gonna be crying during this review it may not be long but it's gonna be watery <laughs> anyway you guys it is the big day it is Ralph Angel and Darla's wedding day and everyone is on board everyone is on board it um the 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 episode opens with Ralph Angel and Darla having morning coffee on the front porch obviously on the beautiful border lawn land this whole um scene set up of the house on border lawn land and the sugarcane field and the big old oak trees and moss trees like it begs for reflection and Ralph Angel is is really in such a good place. And he tells Darla all the beautiful things he's going to do for her this day. And she's still giving us a little trepidation. She's still giving us a little pause. And it's keeping us in this weird space, right? Um, where we're just waiting for the shoe to drop. And I think that's probably more conditioning than anything. Like we're used to Ish going south with Ralph Angel and Darla. And so we're all just, we're all just on the edge of our seats. Like what, 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 what is this music? What is all this hesitation? Like what? <laughs> so Anyway, um, and it's a beautiful moment. Like I said, it, this is really making him happy. But every step of the way, I, I dare say, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. Anyway, I dare say from episode one, we have seen Ralph Angel just really pour his heart out to Darla. Like the this level of vulnerability and caring and thoughtfulness and just wanting to make her happy. Like being in love with her makes him a better man. Having her in blue in his life makes him a better man. And every episode, the, the writers as well as Coffee Cirebo, the actor who plays Ralph Angel finds a way to exude this this gratefulness, right? And in and of itself, it makes us love him. It makes Coffee Cirebo that much more handsome, you know, Ralph Angel. It makes the storyline that much more romantic, but it wasn't until things clicked for Darla that I realized what this was, right? What this is I'm feeling and we're going to talk about it, but um, let's talk about Omar Dorsey, who plays um, Hollywood. Um, Hollywood is still in Baton Rouge and Baton, Baton Rouge. 
and he is packing up Willa Mae, his mama's house. She has passed away from COVID. And what I love so much about what is going on with um, Omar Dorsey and the Hollywood character is that Omar doesn't have a person there to bounce the script off of. He doesn't have an energy that is present um, in the room with him in the scene to bounce the script off of. Like he's not bouncing it off via, yeah, they're talking on the phone and she's talking to him on the phone, but you know, it's not the same. He doesn't have Prosper to go and see and Prosper's not coming to see him. And Ralph Angel, you know, is a good place, a sounding board, that type of thing. He doesn't have this um, surrounding of love, a place where he can, can you know, exegete this, this overwhelming sense of grief that he feels. Um, but he does an amazing job of emoting these emotions, the loss that he feels. And one of my um, favorite honeybees was saying to me that um, this triggered them because they lost their mom not too long ago. And when I was doing the review last week, I thought about it. And um, I thought about this person in particular and a couple of other people who have had you know this parental loss and that is the gift that Omar Dorsey gives the viewers in in this season the gift that he has given us is this ability to act out this tremendous weight and pressure and a sense of loss OK, it's important for that loss to be acknowledged. It's important for that loss to be expounded upon. Right. And it's important for how that loss has affected you to be authentic. And that is what we get from Omar Dorsey with the Hollywood character in this episode. He talked to Ralph Angel about how he his mom wanted to be cremated, which was a shock for him, and how he went to this lake that she loved and took her ashes and how still the lake was. And that's the thing is that when you're in the middle of loss, when you're in the middle of grief, things around you s seem to move in slow motion. It, they seem to move without sound. Like you are acutely aware of the wings on the fly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, that landed on the table. Like everything becomes this really focused in moment, right? Like it's almost like time slows down a little bit for you to catch up with what's happening to you, right? And he talks about how still that lake was and how, you know, he spread his mom's ashes. Um, it was the stillest he'd ever seen that lake. And it was almost like um, the lake needed the ashes and she needed to be there. Like, it was such a touching moment, even in the moments where he wasn't giving us dialogue. He was giving us this this sense of grief. Now, he can't come to the wedding, right? And he lets Ralph Angel know this. Charlie is going to be um, Darla's um, maid of honor. And she... Um, she says that she and Charlie are getting a little bit closer and she trusts her and this is what she wants to do. Charlie comes over a little bit early to help her get ready. Um, and, you know, she comes in with her laptop and it's going to be this big, you know, to do or whatever. Like Charlie does it. Tables, chairs. Y'all remember. <laughs> oh, did the tables out at chairs? You know, one of the first fights that she had with Nova was over tables and chairs. <laughs> it was like episode two, episode three of season one. Um, Y'all remember that? Put it down below, right? Okay, so um, 
yeah, so um, we we get to visit Nova at home before this, and she's pulling out all these pictures of little little Ra as a baby. You know, he's the baby of the family, and how her mom felt about him, and how you know he was. Um, you know, just this little, little thing under the foot, underfoot, and now he's getting married and, uh, it's still this awkwardness I'm getting from Nova and Calvin. I don't know. Next week we're going to visit, um, the George Floyd situation. So they'll be crying next week too, as well. Just FYI. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, but, um, so Charlie comes in, she's got the laptop and she's put it down and she's like, oh, come look at these tables and chairs. And Darla's like, no, I don't think it needs to be that much, right? Like if everything is really, really calm, if you've ever tried to do something, you got something planned for like, let's say four or five o'clock in the afternoon, I promise you that day will fly by, especially if you got errands. But everybody seems real calm, you know. And she opens the laptop and who is it? It is her mom. It is Aunt Vi and it's Nova all on Zoom. And this is her virtual bridal shower. And um, Nova gives a very lovely welcome to um, Darla, which was needed, right? Because they've had a contentious relationship over the last season. Vi, of course, welcomes her. She grumbled and complained in the beginning because she had to make the cake and it was such short notice and, you know, Hollywood and stuff not there. But, you know, Vi always pulls it together beautifully. Now, I don't know what this hair is that they got on Vi's head. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I, I don't think that she needs to wear a wig all the time. I just feel like it could be a little bit better, right? But I digress. And it is Darla's mom. And <clears throat> it's just a really happy moment. And um, it's all very lovely. Then we see this scene with Charlie and with... Um, oh, so... Darla let the ladies know on the Zoom call that she had um, blue tested and because she felt like he was gifted. They're really pushing this um, gifted and um, my twisted life of poetry, a poetry twisted life. All you got to do is put in poetry and twist it. I promise you she will come up, right? Um, mention um, something about blue being gifted and that type of thing. And so we're seeing it here. Um, to me, I don't know. Uh, blue comes across a little bit on the spectrum to me. Like, I, I don't mean that in a shady way at all. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing either. I think that that, that individuals who find themselves on the spectrum serve a very specific purpose in God's kingdom and are some of the most gifted people amongst us. But at the same time, he comes across to me, maybe it's the acting, a little bit like he's on the spectrum. Y'all just tell me what y'all think. Put it down below. I am fully prepared to be chastised about that. Although I've said it before, I'll say it again. I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. Okay. So... Charlie and Ralph Angel talk, and it ends up with them having an old school race with one another. It was very nice. It was very cute. And um, she tells him that she's proud of him. That's what we used to do for fun was race. <laughs> Are you bought? Get ready, set, go. And Charlie's a cheater. She bust out ahead of him, and he still smoked her, but... You could tell I'm into the sibling rivalry, right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, that was really, really nice. Um, so we get to the wedding day and, um, everything has been really, really great. Um, of course, Hollywood's not coming, so, um, uh, Micah has decided to be the best man, and it's all just really, I mean, they, they, they're a family that loves each other. So each scene is full of love and 
you know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you and welcoming to Darla and encompassing and just there's there's no shade on this day. There's no backbiting or double talking or side eyeing like there's there's nothing but pure love in each and every scene whether it's Hollywood's love for Willa May his mom or um, Vi's love for both Ralph Angel and Darla and Blue Charlie's love for Micah, Charlie's love for her brother and her sister and Aunt Vi and, and being aboard alone. You know, it's just love everywhere, right? So, um, Darla, throughout the whole thing, is giving us this trepidatious, hesitant, um, you know afar off Darla you know every time we see her she's in this afar off stare so everybody's dressed ready to go um everyone's supposed to wear yellow and um the, it's decorated beautifully um Ralph the Angel did a beautiful job building the trellis and uh Darla and Charlie did a beautiful job decorating and the flowers and it was just really really nice it was very very um country chic um, which is really Ralph Angel and Darla's style. Really lovely, really beautiful, really colorful. All the things we love about Queen Sugar. So in comes um, Charlie. And she's got a box, a gift from Nova that Nova has sent ahead. And Darla is sitting there on the bed and she looks beautiful. I'll tell you what who she reminded me of. She reminded me of like a 1970s um singer, somebody like um I think Denise LaSalle, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, Stephanie Mills, you know, just the way her hair was done and that, that hair brooch and, um, the dress, the way it was shot, um, kind of like in a seventies picture haze. <clears throat> That's what she reminded me of, like a Denise LaSalle, um, type individual. But anyway, <clears throat> immediately Charlie wants to know if she's okay and she's like oh yeah I'm fine you sure you want to do this and she's like oh yeah absolutely I want to do this still we're not convinced right but what Nova has sent is letters to Ralph Angel from his mom and Vintage paper and <clears throat> it's just beautiful, handwritten. It's just lovely. But I think <clears throat> in this moment, what I realized is <clears throat> that Ralph Angel has, you know, this whole season gone above and beyond to show us the man that he's become and to show Darla how much he loves her and cherishes her. And it's not until this moment that <clears throat> Darla realizes that it's all for her and that this is happening and that This blessing, everything, the good man, the wonderful family, the beautiful baby, it's all for her. And it's that moment when you're in this place of just being completely and utterly and suddenly blessed <clears throat> that you feel the most unworthy. That you think in this moment, God, you can't 
have meant to do this for me. You can't have meant to bless me this much because you know how raggedy you are. You know how filthy you are. You know the things that you have done. And when I say that, I mean this flesh, right? Because we all fall down. Some of us want to get up, but we cannot. <clears throat> we are not fortunate enough to get up. But when you have fallen and fallen and fallen and fallen and you have someone, something that repeatedly pours into you, repeatedly loves you in spite of, it is overwhelming because you feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not. This can't be for me. And it was just, it was just so huge. And and, 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 and I'm just going to say this. You know, I'm 50, right? And coming up, we were told a lot of things as young girls. Um, not, you know, out of malicious intent, but because people did what they thought was best at that time. But we're told that. Um, good girls only do certain things and that if you do this, no man will ever marry you. Um, if he gets the milk for free, he'll never buy the cow. Um, if you don't dress a certain way, you'll be considered this type of individual, this type of person less than, um, you're told that if you, especially as a woman, if you make these mistakes, if you fall in, in this way or that way, um, then now going forward, you're sullied and still in some countries it's, it's taught it's law, right? That if, if a woman falls short in any type of way, she is no longer worthy to be married. She is no longer worthy to be loved. She's no longer worthy to be looked upon as a human being. So imagine etern internalizing all of that. And realizing that you too, you too deserve love. You too deserve happiness and you too shall have it. Never ever let anybody tell you that hey, God don't love you and he don't have the very best for you. He does. He does. We just have to open our hearts and our minds to receive these things, right? And don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not good enough. That there is not redemption, oh my gosh, for you. And that is what this moment is. Yes, it's about Ralph Angel showing us that he is this remarkable individual. He has grown into this remarkable individual. But it's also about this redemptive moment. The redemption between Nova, who acknowledges that she hurt and drugged Darla last year. And, and was inconsiderate, okay? And is the first to welcome her to the board alone family. Redemption, right? The redemption of that relationship. Y'all remember how Aunt Vi was towards Dollar? Remember when she found out that Blue wasn't really um, Ralph Angel's blood son? Huh? Nova and Charlie could have scratched Dollar's eyes out. But we're seeing redemption here. We're seeing redemption here. And in and, and, and it's in and, and Darla's bosom is full. It is full of redemption and the love of Christ and the love of the board alone family. And it is just an absolutely positively wonderful, wonderful moment. Every little bit of positivity that you can get out of these scenes, out of this episode, get it. It's not about the COVID. It's not about the COVID. It's about the coming together and the mending of things. And we need it. We need that now more than ever. Okay. So, um, oh, Lord, I did better than I thought I would. Right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, if I'm not mistaken, Oprah puts the soundtracks, if she still does it, to the episodes on uh, the own website, I encourage you go out to go out and download the soundtracks if you can. And um, it's just beautiful music. Um, the preacher spoke beautifully. 
Darla and Ralph Angel say beautiful, beautiful vows to one another. And in this moment, after she read that letter and she saw where Ralph Angel's mom only wish was for him to feel this love, to feel this continuing sense of love that she this that she had had for him the moment that she saw him, right? And Darla recognizes that she is that love. She is that continuation of that love, right? Whew, heavy. And after this, there's no more trepidatious Darla. I mean, it's amazing acting. There's there's no more hesitant Darla. There's no more of this distant, far away, staring off into nothingness, wondering Darla, this self-doubting, self-hating, self-judging Darla, okay? She is in full bloom happiness right now, and so is Ralph Angel, and so is Blue, and so is all the border lawns. They take pictures, they take cake, um, Hollywood showed up, you know, and he says to Vi, you have to keep living, right? Later on, after he gives a wonderful toast, he tells Vi that she's all that he has. And Vi, um, who has stood, bridged the gap and interceded for Hollywood through this whole thing, says, you're all I need and you're all I'll ever need. And I'll always be here for you. I was like, Vi, if you don't get your man. If you don't love him up, baby, <laughs> okay, if you don't love him up, you know, everybody wants that love. I, I just looked at the way um, the Darla and the um, Ralph Angel character are so intimate with one another. I don't think that they like go together outside of the show. I don't think that they're a couple, but these these soft, gentle touches, it really brings the character of Darla and Ralph Angel to life. And um, it, it's just a, it's across the board, just stellar, stellar acting. I just really, really enjoyed this episode. And it's just another episode where I was able to really connect with what... I think the writers were are trying to convey. Um, next week, like I said, we're going to talk about the whole George Floyd situation. You guys know we're coming off of this $27 million judgment that has been given to his family. Um, and the one year anniversary of um, what happened to him. And... Um, it's going to be a tough episode. I know that it's going to be a tough episode, but we can do it. You guys, we're going to, we're in this thing together and we are going to pick it apart and we are going to eat the meat and we are going to spit out the bones, right? Um, you guys tell me what you thought of this episode, the texture, the layers, the depth of writing, the depth of acting. I would love to hear what you got from this episode. Oh, Calvin also mentioned to Nova, they were all at their own separate table, right? The couples. And he mentions to Nova, can you ever see us getting married? Do you ever see us getting married? I mean, I don't want to hope and wish and think about us getting married if you can't see it happening. This is what Calvin is telling Nova. And um, I don't know. I mean, honest to goodness... I'm just not all in with Calvin and Nova. I just, I don't, I don't know. I need to be, I need to be careful. So I'm just going to say, I don't know. Y'all tell me what you think. Y'all put it down below. And until next time, honeybees, I'll holla.